Hello everybody and welcome to another Card Karma Legacy Deck video. Today we are covering um, one of the more prominent decks in the format and that is uh, TDK. Named for uh, mostly the Pokemon that go into it which would be Thunderous, Deoxys, and Kyurem. So uh, this deck goes back quite a bit. Um, it was played a, a whole lot during the Plasma uh, period. And it has quite a bit of support from that time, such as uh, Chorus Machine, things like that, that allow it to be just really consistent, really powerful, um, just a solid deck. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. First of all, I'll cover the main ones. Uh, Thunderous, 170 HP EX Pokemon. Um, the primary reason you're going to be using Thunderous is for his first attack, Rain Knuckle. It uh, costs one electric, does 30 damage, and it attaches an energy card from your discard pile to one of your benched Team Plasma Pokemon. So obviously it goes to Team Plasma Pokemon, so you have the support there. And notice that it says energy card. It doesn't say basic or it doesn't have any restrictions. So you could grab, you know, DCE, we don't run those, but you can grab Rainbow, Prisms, Plasmas. You can grab everything, any energy card in your discard pile and attach it. So you can use Thunderous to accelerate your Kyurems and stuff uh, a lot easier. And uh, it's a good just backup. He does have Thunderous Noise as a secondary attack, and you are able to use it. I mean, you can power up to it. Um, it's not very commonly used, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, Deoxys is primarily here as a support Pokemon. He has the ability Power Connect. Uh, it says your Team Plasma Pokemon's attacks do 10 more damage. Um, and it, it doesn't buff other Deoxys, but it buffs all the rest of your Plasma Pokemon. So that's pretty cool, and uh, it's not to be shrugged off. You can actually use Helix Force in this deck as well. Uh, it costs one Psychic and a Colorless. It does 30 plus. If this Pokemon has any Plasma Energy attached, it does 30 more for each damage attached to the defending Pokemon. So this can actually come through in like clutch situations against um, certain Pokemon that, that you know that like to stock up a lot of energies. But most notably, I would say Mewtwo because it's also weak to Psychic. So you can actually use this thing to just knock out Mewtwo's outright. Obviously, it's a risk to attach energy to him. He is um, 170 HP, weak to Psychic as well, so another Mewtwo could come in and knock him right back out, you know, so-and-so. But um, it's worth noting that you can attack with him. Other than that, he just powers up all your other Plasma Pokemon. So with a bunch of them on the bench, even like your Raiden Knuckle can be doing, you know, 60 or whatever. Uh, can do a lot more. So yeah, three copies of these. Uh, you could run four to get maximum value, but you, we do have limited bench space, and you have to keep that in mind. So... You don't always have room to play for. Um, yeah, two copies of Thunderous because, like I said, you don't rely on that strategy. It's more of like a backup strategy. And then you run the four copies of Kiram. He's your primary attacker, your main attacker. Um, 130 HP is really nice because it doesn't get, like, sniped or beat up real easy by some of the more common strategies. Like, for example, uh, Genesect without a G-Booster can only do 100 to him. And... Um, even if you, even if he had 20 damage onto him prior, you know, from say another, you know, another Megalo Cannon, uh, it's still not enough. 130 HP is really, really resilient in this format. Um, he's a Water type, which is really good. Um, it beats, it beats Landorus. It beats some other things that are weak to Water Fire types, obviously. Um, but he's actually weak to Steel, which is not a very prominent type, which is good to know. Good to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, his first attack, Frost Spear, one, one water, one colorless, does 30 and does 30 to the bench. So you get a nice little snipe effect. Um, definitely powerful, definitely strong. And again, you have to keep in mind with Deoxys, these attacks can be doing more. So with three Deoxys, you're doing 60 and then 30 to the bench. So 90 damage for two energy. It's pretty solid. Um, and then his second attack, Blizzard Burn, costs double water in a colorless. Does 120 and this Pokemon can't attack during the next turn. So, um, obviously you have that drawback of not being able to attack, but doing 120, and let's say, you you know, with a Silver Bangle, you could do 150, plus, you know, two Deoxys, and that's 170 right there. So you can see, like, it's worth it to not attack if you can just straight up take two prizes off of, like, almost any EX, really. Um, and if you have a laser or any other damage, I mean, that, you could take that prize super duper easy, so... Uh, you can see how Kyurem can easily become a very powerful Pokemon given the right support, you know, with Deoxys and etc. So uh, that's your primary, like, attack unit, if you will. And then we run a couple little tech cards. Um, this type of deck, you, there really is a lot, of, it's open-ended. You could build it however you wanted to. Um, like, you don't have to include an egg, you don't have to include Smeargle. Um, I run the Smeargle because uh, 
there's no real way to um, I mean, you don't really benefit that much from level ball so there's no way to level ball for Jirachi or anything like that so getting the extra draw power from Smeargle is nice um, as I said definitely not necessary in the deck execute because we run four junk arms and uh, just to make those a little bit lighter on resources is the reason why Execute is here. Again, you could swap this out for other things, you know, Mr. Mime, whatever. Uh, who knows what you might want to run. And then uh, Spirit Tomb is there as an answer to uh, Genesect, I guess, in a way. And then it also just can hurt certain decks. But uh, his ability Sealing Scream uh, prohibits both players from playing Ace Specs. So no G-Booster for Genesect being the most important one. Of course, they can red signal out and take a spirit tomb, but that's better than t them taking one of your other Pokemon. Um, but yeah, it's it's there as more of an annoyance factor than anything else. But um, again, it's not 100% necessary, but it's it's a nice effect to have. So yeah, that covers the Pokemon line. You'll notice that it's very streamlined, very straightforward. Uh, moving on to the trainers, two copies of Bicycle. This is good because you can turbo down and then you know. Uh, you know, draw out a you know fresh hand of four. You know, just say you draw three cards, whatever. Um, it's a nice little refill. It's not amazing, but it's it's nice in this format, especially with junk arm. Three copies of Colors Machine. This allows you to power up your Pokemon that much faster. It's um like turn one Frost Spear is basically a guarantee, and like it's it's just um it just adds a lot of speed to the deck. Really, is about what it comes down to. Two copies of Laser. Some decks run three or four in this. Um, of this variant, you know, or this archetype rather. I'm going lower on the Hypnotoxic Lasers. N not because they're not powerful, but just because a lot of decks also have answers to them. Whether it be Verizian and like Verizian Genesect, or um, like a lot of other decks like you have evolved strategies like Weavile or Ninetales, they can just evolve and get rid of the poison. So my logic is to run less of these and use them as just like you know that final little extra inch if you need it and then I'm actually running Frozen City instead of Verbank. Um, the reason I'm running Frozen City again is because I feel like it punishes other decks like it punishes in a different way and it doesn't have any drawback on you like if you play a Verbank, you can get lasered yourself and take that additional poison damage Frozen City does not really punish any of your Pokemon and it has potential to punish you know all of theirs depending on their strategy um, Another thing to keep in mind is like, you know, like Verizian, or yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's, a, it's another way to build it. If Again, you can change this how you want. If you want to go with Verbanks, maybe you run more lasers, but uh, that's your call. Four copies of Junk Arm, as I said earlier. In this type of deck, when you have tons of these trainer cards, like you're just running a ton of different options for trainers, Junk Arm is going to give you a lot of flexibility on what you can play, when you can play it, and that sort of thing. Two copies of Pokemon Catcher because, like, like I said, in this deck with the blowout factor of Deoxys and, and Kiram and all that, Catchering out one of their, you know, backed up EXs that they're trying to power up, uh, getting that out early and knocking it out can be, you know, swing the momentum in your favor so much. Um, so Pokemon Reversal is really nice. So two copies there, or Pokemon Catcher, if you will. It's the same card. So yeah, don't get that confused. Three copies of Random Receiver. Again, like I said earlier, no Jirachi or anything. So using this as kind of an engine to guarantee a supporter card in your hand. Um, so that's the main reason there's such a high count. Um, you might cut it down to two and swap in something else. That's up to you. Uh, two copies of Switch. Switch is good, obviously, if you get, say, like a Deoxys stuck up there or your Spear Tomb stuck in the active, you can uh, switch it out. Uh, three copies of Team Plasma Ball. These it gets you, obviously, any of your main three pieces, your main three components. So, uh, however you need to use those, they're they're very nice for this type of deck. One copy of Tool Scrapper. You do not want, you know, Garbodor would be a problem. It would turn off all your Deoxys and um, make some of your other cards useless as well. Obviously, these tech cards um, become less useful. So, yeah, Tool Scrapper is nice for that. You could also, if they do manage to get a G-Booster on or something like that, you can knock it off, that sort of thing. So, t Tool Scrapper is nice. Two copies of Chorus because you do want to be filling your bench with Deoxys and that sort of thing. Having a full bench is pretty common for this build. So uh, it's definitely smart to run some copies of Chorus to take advantage of that. Two copies of N. It's a fair number. I mean, this deck does take prizes pretty well, but um, if you need a supporter, you need a supporter. You know, it's, it is what it is. So N will, will draw you some cards. I mean, that's that simple. So yeah. 
two copies of Juniper. Everyone knows why Juniper is good. Just draw a fresh hand of seven. This deck can turbo a lot. You know, play out most of their hand and then just Juniper, you know, and get a fresh seven. Very powerful supporter. You could run more if you'd like. I, I choose to rely more so on Oak. It does only draw you six, but it shuffles those cards back into your deck. So it's not a dis as destructive on your resources. And that's why I run the three copies of Oak here. Two copies of Frozen City. Whoops. I already covered that. Um, whenever any player plays energy on their Pokemon, as long as they're not Team Plasma, it does two, uh, 20 damage to that Pokemon. So against a lot of other strategies, it's going to punish them for playing energies, which any of that incremental damage is just going to help Kyurem take knockouts that much easier, especially with uh, the bench sniping damage and that sort of thing. Um, it can really add up, I think. And uh, so I'm going to run it that way. One copy of Floatstone. This is good for you know something like Deoxys, especially uh, with that two retreat cost to get him out of the active. And uh, it's important to note that like Skyro Bridge wouldn't even help here. Like you would still need to manually attach one to pretty much all your Pokemon, and he would. But uh, Kyrum has I think three. Yeah. So your retreats are going to be kind of iffy if you do get stuck in like a bad scenario. So Floatstone is could be probably will be a lifesaver in a lot of situations. Two copies of Silver Bengal. You could run three. Um, it's very powerful on Kiram because he's just he's just a really good non-EX attacker. And then just adding that extra 30 damage is just like over the top damage, really. Uh, very nice. And then getting into our energy line. This is, again, another area where you could customize it and run different amounts. Um, I'm running two copies of Blend. It does provide water for Kiram and electric for Thunderous. But we have other ways to get electric, too. So that's why I don't have the four. Um, four copies of Plasma Energy, pretty much a no-brainer in a Plasma-based deck. You want access to those Plasma Energies for your Colors Machine, for a lot of your added effects that rely on you having Plasma attached. Um, four copies of Prism, works on all your Pokemon, provides any type of energy with no drawback like Rainbow has. So this one's pretty much solid. Like I said, this is how you're able to power up uh, Deoxys and uh, Thunderous, sorry. I do run the one copy of Rainbow because it gives you one more out that powers both um, Thunderous and Deoxys, where the Blend Energy would only power the Thunderous. But this 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 powers up everything in your deck, so it's an added Prism with a slight drawback, and then just one basic Water. <laughs> so we do have at least one Energy that's not liable to get uh, Lost Removered away or Enhanced Hammered away. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the deck. Uh, hopefully I can get a match or so for match here. Facing uh, Major Ortega with a Dragon Psychic Steel Colorless deck. Not 100% sure what that is. Don't really have a good guess. Uh, he does have a Dragon Coin, so maybe some sort of... Um, could be could be a lot of things. Garchomp with like Mr. Mime and um, Jirachi. I don't know. So yeah, we're gonna we do lead with um, Deoxys, which is unfortunate. So hopefully we can find a way to get him out of that active spot. See what our opponent decides to do. I believe he's going first, but I could be wrong. Yeah, he's going first. And yeah, it's gonna be a Garchomp deck of some sort. And go straight for the Jirachi. That's a good uh, Pokemon Catcher target, if it comes to that. Okay, Jirachi for Collector. Very solid turn one. I mean, if you can get a Collector out turn one, you're going to have a good time. Especially in a setup heavy deck like this. And that Mime does mean that our, our Kiram's won't be doing their bench damage now. He chooses to go straight for the Retreat. Interesting. Because I was actually going to consider... <laughs> trying to catch your him up, and he just brings him up for me. Um, I don't want to attach the water, so I'm just going to go ahead and go for the end. Okay, we do get a cure him. I'm going to attach there. Um, I'm not sure if I really need to play the Thunders right now. Uh, I don't feel like I do. Um, is it worth to turn off his 
a spec right now. I don't even know what a spec he could be running, but uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and play that and just prevent that for sure from happening. And unfortunately, I have to end the turn. Not a lot more I can do. Um, he will now have to retreat Dirachi and get something going with as far as energy on his Gibbles. So uh, yeah. He plays an end, drawing us cards this time, so I guess we didn't give him a good hand. I'll definitely take the free cards though, we do get the Floatstone and two more Deoxys, so that's good for us. He does get his Dragon Call online, so now we gotta start streaming the dragons. Um, yeah, now we can get Malteria active. Sorry, not close down with the silver bangle. So now we're doing 30, 60, 90. So that's enough to Oko right there. Um, guess. I don't think it really matters if I play another Kiram yet. I'm gonna play it. It's gonna take this knockout here. This prize lead, I think, is worth it. It won't matter because it's Mr. Mime. And yeah, we'll take the first two prizes here. Okay, you got to Gibble with the first Dragon Call. Let's see if he grabs a dra or Guard Chomp. Oh, he grabs another Altaria. Okay. That tells me he's not on the offensive this turn, or okay, maybe he is. Maybe he has it in hand. I guess for the colors. Okay, it's a huge color, so he should hit a Garchomp. He does. It's not a knockout, but it will knock off our plasma energy. We should get a we can get a blizzard burn kill here, right? Yeah, that's not bad. Um, he has to has to do a lot to keep you know, we're taking these prizes really efficiently keeping him on the back foot the entire time. Um, but he can still win this at any at any point. Okay, and he actually does run rare candy. That's interesting. Um, so he will take the KO here. Okay, you know, junk arm, tossing Swablu and an Altaria for a level ball. Maybe get another Gibble in play just to be safe. Yep. And 
Juniper's that hand away, so he's he's definitely going in on his resources here. Um, that might be what he has to do to keep up with me. And yeah, he does 100 damage there. I'm gonna put up the uh, the Oxus first because it does have a float stone. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and play the blend energy down. Go ahead and scrap that bangle. Do I even need Thunderous? I'm not sure. I'm gonna grab it, I guess. Maybe I could have done a play here with that this turn. Attacked with Thunderous? I don't know. Let's see. Go for the Pokemon Reversal. We hit it. Take his gibble. I could take. I have to take the gibble. I believe. I'm gonna do that. Just gonna use the switch here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Use the switch. We hit the colors machine. I hope that's not our last plasma. It's not. We have a junk arm available. We can grab bike. Is that worth it? I don't think it is just yet. Okay, take another prize. Another course machine. That one will not be useful to us unless we can get shuffle that uh, plasma back in. Okay, he goes for the end, so that could hurt us. Let's go for his Dragon Blade attack, which uh, is a guaranteed knockout. Again, promote the Float Stone. Okay, we actually have the Juniper. I don't think I need to play either of those cards. And I could hit Colorus or something. But I could hit N. Here. This will be doing sixty. I do not have I don't have a cure on the bench right now. That's not good. I'm trying to give him this prize, I guess. Maybe I put him to sleep. So this is a bit of a hurdle, only because I didn't get that other Kieran down. Let's see, okay, he grabs another Gabite. He did super out those back in, so. Silver Bangle. 
could be a problem for us. He's gonna retreat. Okay, he doesn't want that damage to build up, I guess. And he goes for the oak here. How much damage is he left with? 90. Okay, he is gonna take us out. He's not enough. He's he's not doing enough either unless he gets the energy for the second attack. Okay, so he's taking guaranteed prizes. doesn't work unless he's asleep.
22 prizes. So that's GG. Yeah, very unfortunate. Uh, this deck is a pretty good matchup, I would say. Um, just non EX attackers hitting each other, and I can't do that magic 140. But uh, I think you can at least see what the deck's capable of. That, like I said, that was uh, kind of a bad matchup. It's all non-EXs. You definitely prey on EX kills. Um, you saw how like that Jirachi KO at the very beginning put us like way ahead. But um, 140 damage is a lot. Um, looking back on it, I think if I had the Laser Burbank instead of Frozen City, I would have taken more of those KOs easier. So perhaps that's uh, the lesson you should learn here. Frozen City is definitely... It's situationally good, but uh, I think the incremental damage over time you get from Burbank might actually just be better, even if you can heal off the poison or something like that. Um, let's see, what else to say about the deck? I don't know, it's... Like I said, it's extremely resilient. You can power up out of nowhere. You're just capable of um, accelerating energies extremely quickly, putting out a lot of damage with Silver Bangles and Laser Bank and that sort of thing. So I hope you enjoyed the deck and um, I have to see what I have in store for you guys next time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and uh, have a good day.